welcome to the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Carrie. And this podcast is dedicated to making things simple and easy for you in the kitchen. Carrie Brown is a classically trained, world-class chef who has a passion for creating ketogenic recipes that taste better than anything you've ever experienced. But more than that, she loves teaching people how to cook the right way. And each week on this podcast, Brian and I discuss all the ways you can create awesome keto food that is guaranteed to make you a rock star in the kitchen. If you'd like to learn more about Keto Evangelist Kitchen, you can go to KetoEvangelistKitchen.com and sign up for the newsletter. In exchange for your email address, you'll get brand new recipes delivered to your inbox, ready for you to whip up in the kitchen and enjoy with your friends and family. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. You're about to enter the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. And hello again, everybody. My name is Brian Williamson. This is the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. And with me, as always, the wonderfully awesome Carrie Brown. Hello, lovely people. So, Carrie Brown. Yes. What uh, What are we going to be talking about today? Well, that threw me off a bit. Oh, did it? See, I was right on track. Like, I was, I actually, like... You're not used to me being like focused. Is that what's going on here? No, normally you're like, where are you? What's the weather? What plant would you be See? if you were a plant? You can't, you can't. I'm just saying that like, I'm going to zig when you think I'm going to zag and I'm going to like, you know, whatever the opposite of that is, I'm going to do that. So, you know, I like to keep things because th that way the terrorists never know when the, they never know which way we're going. They're like. We thought you were going to be talking about pasta. And we're like, we never talk about pasta. That was my terrorist impression, by the way. Um, so <clears throat> somehow, and, and yet somehow you have, you have caused me to, to not be focused at all. Winning. Right. Um, you are sequestered. Is that not the case? I am sequestered. And, um, and uh, so why, uh, why are what's the deal with that like you are you're not like in the familiar confines of the carrie brown estate what's the deal i am not i am at the ocean i see okay so is this because uh you like to fish i like to eat fish that is not what i asked oh unless unless like you dive in all like seal style and not not the navy seal style like you know, the marine mammal seal style, like dive in and like chase fish down and like, like, like eat them in the ocean. Do you do I that? believe we previously discussed the fact that I am a non-swimmer. Uh, so I'm going to say that you're going to answer that with a negative then is what. So I'm no, thinking. there is no seal like swimming behavior. Is it, so there's no swimming like behavior at all. Like period. Ever. No. Um, I have imitated drowning a few times. <laughs> you've imi you've imitated it. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my most frightening moments ever as a child, ever. So I grew up in Germany. I grew up for a few years in Germany, and uh, that explains a lot. Well, that that is frightening in and of itself. But um, mm -hmm. the uh, th they have these um, these public pools. Uh, that I remember going to, um, which surprisingly a lot of Germans there. I don't. I it was it was weird. Um, and there's I a lot of Germans in Germany. It's strange. It's really weird. Like if you go to Germany, be prepared for a lot of German people, and and they're like unapologetic about the fact that they're German and you're not. Um, I like German people. Do what? I love German people. Oh, I do too. They're. I think they're hilarious. Um, I, the thing is, like German people have a reputation of not having a sense of humor, and I think that is just a. I think that's propaganda on the part of the Brits. I'll be honest with you, because I think German people just have a brilliant sense of humor. It's just incredibly dry, and the Brits don't want anyone to have a drier sense of humor than the Brits do. That's the thing you see. They, they're they're very funny, but they just don't tell their face. Oh, I know. They're very stoic. They they <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm in this. Uh, I'm like eight. Uh, eight years old and I'm in this pool and I remember going to like the deep end. This is a huge, in my memory, this is a huge pool. It's like the size of the ocean. And 
I was, I didn't have like floaties or anything like that. You know, I'm swimming and I, all of a sudden I realized <clears throat> I've gone too far and I can't touch the bottom anymore. And that starts to freak me out a little bit. So I start to flail about and this, this German dude swims by and like, he's doing laps and I'm, I'm like starting to, you know, vocally, Damn. vocally freak out because I'm convinced I'm about to die. And he just, he just swims right by me, like smacks me in the head with his stroke as he's going. Like he doesn't even pay attention to the fact that like there's someone dying right there. Uh, and that's, it was at that point that I was like, okay, um, I really, I really got to do something about this. And so, uh, I, <laughs> I, it's not funny, but it's funny. Well, I I realized at that point like I had to take it take the situation into my own control. Like I couldn't do anything about it, and I I don't remember how. I think, uh, one I think my 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 older brother, um, dove in and pulled me to uh, to the shallow end. Like he was watching the whole thing unfold, and he was just waiting for me to go under for the last time, and he was going to save me. Like he was waiting and waiting and waiting to be the hero. Right. Um, but that that is one of the memories I have of swimming in Europe, and that's probably why you don't like to swim, is what I'm saying. It's because of stuff like that. Yes, I um, I was playing in the shallows, on the in the sea in Kent in England once when I was small, and and I don't know if you know, and I can't remember what they're called, but but at high and low tide, there's these kind of big holes made by the sea, like sinkholes. Mm-hmm. And and I was running along, and of course I couldn't see that there was this massive hole because I was in the shallows. It was you can see the hole. It was it was covered, and I'm running along, and my mother's further out, and we're throwing a beach ball at each other, and I'm, I'm she threw it, and I ran along the beach, in in the shallows, and disappeared into this hole deep I mean you know this thing was like three or four feet deep and I fell in it and of course even though I was technically only in four inches of water all of a sudden I'm like I'm drowned right (laughs) and um there were several incidents like that and you added them all up and it's just and I've tried to learn to swim but I just I can't get past it for folks who are listening uh, Carrie is so averse that she doesn't even drink water that's how scared she is of drowning (laughs) Just, just so you know, she's. Um... And you think he's joking? Really not? No, did not a fan. Not a fan of the water. Nope, not at all. Um... However, I love being. I love living on the edge, and I love being by the ocean. So I just for... don't go in it. But I like to sit on the edge of it and watch it and breathe it in and listen to it and. Let's, yes, okay, love the so ocean. Just the, as long as I'm not in it. The the English. The, the carry to English translation of living on the edge means she likes living near the beach. That's or the edge of the continent where all yes. where the ocean meets the land. Yes. Uh, so just like Although, she's, like she's walking on a wire well, in a circus. That's a little that's a little for anyone thing. who knows me well, when I say living on the edge, they're all like nodding knowingly and that's got nothing to do with the beach. Yes, she likes to juggle chainsaws. That's part of a that's part of her charm. She's in, she enjoys that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> she is a knife thrower and she prefers to throw them at herself. She also sharp <laughs> she sharpens boomerangs and sees how well she can hit the target behind her with the boomerang, uh, the sharpened boomerang. So she she really likes living on the edge. Um, uh, oh, okay. So anyway, so I'm away. I'm at the ocean. I'm at the top, discounting Alaska. I'm at the very top left-hand corner of America. Have you and, um, seen any? Uh, do you know what a blackfish is? If I say blackfish or orca or killer whale, I haven't. But then I haven't actually left my little abode if where I'm staying. Some, I haven't left it since I got here. So did you bring your camera with you? I did. I did bring my big girl camera with me, if you, um, just if you, in case. Well, but if you but the deal there. is that I have to get all my work done before I can go play, and I don't think I'm going to get all my work done okay, before so, I have to go home. So all I'm asking is that you find some pic- get some pictures of some killer whales. If that means you got to go out into the water, then you got to do what you got to do. Uh, but I, I would like some pictures of some killer whales. 
of some orcas. So you've had my request. That's all I have to say about that. Now it's up to you. If you guys could see the way she's staring at me right now. <laughs> Let me just say this. You you wouldn't like it. <laughs> it's quite quite disconcerting. Um, okay, so we're going to change subjects now because uh, you've derailed us. Now we need to get back on track. What is it that we are going to be talking about today, Miss Carrie Brown? Zoodles. Say what now? Zoodles? Zoodles. Okay, what in the world are zoodles? One of your favorite things. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait, is that sarcasm? <laughs> Me? No. Not you. Not... Not Carrie Brown. Why would uh, I be sarcastic? No, not me. I'm, I'm British. We don't use sarcasm at all, ever. I no, not at all, ever, ever. Um, oh, I have to. I have to say something. I, I have gotten lots and lots of feedback about my British accent, and the thing is, people don't don't seem to understand. I'm 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 intention, intentionally doing a bad British accent, and. And people, it apparently it grates on people's nerves. So I would just want to say you're welcome to everyone who are who's extremely irritated by that. Um, I my my mission has been accomplished. Then, uh, Maybe all right. Start so, doing an American accent so I can irritate the other half. Oh, you should totally. I was going there. <laughs> oh, I should do an American accent too. Too. I just don't know how. I just don't know how. Um, all right, so... Me either. Right. <laughs> um, Except butter. Well, butter. Butter. Right, so American accents, it's just they have R's. When you go to England, there's no longer the letter R in anything. Butter. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's perfect. You should just... <clears throat> you should just lead with that. Um it's the only thing I can say in American, and I learned to do that because in restaurants I could never get any damn butter because they were like looking at me like, "What?" I'm saying, "Butter? Could I have some butter, please?" Mm -hmm. And they're going, "Huh?" And I'm going, "Butter? Yellow in a little pot? You spread it on your bread? Butter?" And so I, I, I taught myself to say, "Butter." <laughs> butter. Uh, okay. So I, life got staggeringly better after that. <laughs> I've got staggeringly better once you learned how to pronounce an R. Well, well once I learned how to say butter in American. <laughs> in American. Uh, okay. <clears throat> um, all right. So zoodles. What? Okay. For folks who don't know, what in tarnation is a zoodle? It's a zucchini noodle. Because we don't eat normal noodles, no. because normal noodles are made of wheaty, grainy things that make our bodies sad. Right, exactly. Um, so, I have a question for you. How, okay, I've seen zucchinis before, and I've seen cucumbers, and I've seen that they're very similar. How does one create noodles, at not... I'm asking how. I haven't gone into the why yet because that's a whole different discussion. But how does one create noodles out of zucchini? Well, first, I can't move on until I point out that cucumbers and zucchini are pretty much entirely different. Sorry to burst your bubble there, but not Wait. being the vegetable lover, you may not know that. Well, well okay. So, I, yes, I know that they're different. I know that they're they're not the same thing. I'm just saying they have a similar shape, and neither one of them are noodle-shaped. This is true. Okay, that's what this I was getting at. Neither of them are noodle-shaped. Um, so there's three, at least three ways you can make a zoodle from a zucchini. Oh, boy. And okay. – one of them will give you kind of ugly zoodles, and one of them requires lots of dishwashing effort, which I'm never a fan of. And so the third one, in my mind, is the fastest and easiest, and that's to get a little gadget called a julienne peeler. Julienne peeler? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, I'll bite. 
what's the deal? Oh, actually, there's four. There's also the so there's you, you could do it with a knife. That's going to take a lot of time, and you're going to get ugly zoogles unless you're a chef who's learned how to cut precisely. And you also may lose a finger. So I don't recommend <laughs> doing the knife route. Um, it's Although a, it's entirely it possible. If, that's thing. if you like losing your fingers, or you're a shop teacher where no one would notice, go for it. Right. So that's that's what we're saying. So okay. So so what we're saying is there may be three options, but if you don't like a lot of mess. And you like having all of your all all eleven of your fingers, then probably the best option is the second option, right? Get a device that's gonna that's gonna noodle these things right. for you. <clears throat> so a knife. Then there's this this fandangled thing called a spiralizer, which are which were I'm not sure they are so much now, but I don't know a year two years ago they were the thing. They were. The, the spiralizer was was absolutely the thing you had to have, and it makes vegetables and fruits. Not that we eat a lot of fruit, but it makes vegetables into spiral. That's why it's called a spiralizer. Into a sp- you you put the the vegetable on one end, and you kind of push it, and there's a blade, and you can make different shapes. So it you, you can make spiral. Look, look like noodles, but they're spiral and they're made of zucchini. And you can put all sorts of things in a spiralizer and get magical, whirly, zoogly shapes of vegetables out. So, and I actually, I have a spiralizer. I've had one for, I don't know, three years, and I have never used it. What? <laughs> now, is that because, because is that because you're an expert with a knife? One, it's because I'm kind of handy with a knife. Two, because I would like to refer I'm, back to the earlier part of the conversation where you live on the edge and you 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 throw bladed things at people. So <laughs> I'm just saying, um, I'm lazy, lazy as in, um, I'll do the thing that takes the least work to get the same result. So maybe it's not lazy. I'm very efficient. Mm. And um, three, and the big thing is washing dishes. I, it's just not my favorite. And with the spiralizer, you've got a thing, and and you've got to take it apart and wash all the bits, and that kind of seems like way more work than just using option number four. Um, so I, I just – I've never used it. I just find it a lot easier to use my Julian peeler and go – Slice, 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 done. Option number three, so spiralizers, good people love them. You can do exciting shapes. It makes a very even, uniform, pretty product, um, which is, I I think it's important. Pretty is good. Um, I just don't like the whole assembly taking apart washing bit. Have at it. Maybe you have other humans in the house that do the dishwashing. I don't. So... All right. So the third option would be a mandolin, which is not a mu- musical <laughs> instrument. Well, it is, but in this case, I'm talking about a mandolin. Yeah, you're not going to get the same result if you're using the the musical instrument. No, and it's a mandolin with an e on the end. Yeah. And it's a. It looks like a. It kind of looks a bit like a washboard. It, it's kind of long, a foot long, and six inches wide, and it has a an adjustable blade in the middle and you, and you rub, essentially you rub vegetables right. against the blade <laughs> up and down and right. all the stuff piles. Uh, so, and uh, you can get lots of different cutters so you can make lots of different shapes and, and whatnot. Um, easier, a lot easier. doesn't need dismantling a lot easier than um, a spiralizer in terms of cleanup and stuff. They are, if you get a really good one, they are incredibly sharp. And if you're not careful, you can lose a joint. Well, so it's important to, you know, they come with a piece that you actually put the, you've got the mandolin blade, you've got the food you're slicing or cutting, and you've got a a piece that's basically going to drive into that food so that you can move it up and down the the set of the mandolin so you're not using your hands 
So it's really important that you don't try to use a mandolin without that that's that third piece that's the one that's actually attached to the food because you're just like okay i'll just reuse my hands that's a good way to lose a finger yes and so some mandolins come with guards as the thing that brian's talking about um but, but some don't if, if you have a cheap one that doesn't have a guard then you really really have to be careful with um with mandolin however the upside to buying a cheap one is that not only does it not have a guard, but usually the blade's not that sharp either. So you may get away with keeping your finger. Right. You just may, you may just, you know, have a scar on your hand for the rest <laughs> of your life. You may actually have, right. a, your, your finger may not actually come completely off. It'll just be dangling. You know, the, up, the upsides to a mandolin are, um, fast. I mean, you know, you can, you can chop a whole bunch of stuff very quickly with a mandolin and very uniform you get very beautiful very uniform veggies out of a mandolin you do however and the same with the spiralizer you do get some waste because obviously there's a there's a a guard or a with right. a spiralizer there's a thing to which the the vegetable is attached and when you get to the cutters you can only go so far so there is some waste with the mandolin or the spiralizer right um right. And the fourth option, which is for a million miles my favorite for zoodles, obviously its, it's, it's uses are very limited, and um, but it's also incredibly cheap. And it takes no dismantling and almost no washing up, and it's very difficult to um, dismember yourself with it. Um, <laughs> always, a good, called- always a plus. Always a plus. <laughs> Um, is called a julienne peeler and it's uh it looks like um you know the peelers that that have the a a plastic handle and then they have a three inch wide blade at the top going perpendicular to the handle that's the kind i'm talking about i do want to point out that um you're not referring to the northern ireland peelers right does that's that's a completely different thing those are no. those are police officers. We're talking yeah. about. So, I'm, I'm not talking about the kind of peeler that is literally like a knife in, in shape. I'm talking about the peelers that have a, a handle. It looks like a slingshot. And, it looks like a slingshot, except for where the where the little sling right. would be. It's got a blade on it. Right. So a Julienne peeler is is that, but instead of having a a straight blade, it has a um a serrate not a serrated um. Oh, I can't think of the name. It's like a, a divoted blade, or or it's it, when when you're cutting like pinking shears. Do you know what they are? Uh, shears in, that... in dressmaking, you have shears that that make <laughs> you're, a, a. You're asking me if I know about dressmaking. Let me think. No, <laughs> no, I do not. Uh... It makes a, a V teeth teeth marks. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. just like V's. So it has a V blade with lots of teeth and and it also comes with a little plastic guard thing and so you just literally you use it like a peeler so you run it across lengthwise down the length lengthwise. of the zoodle and you get however long your zoodle is say your your uh, zucchini is six inches then you just run this thing down the zucchini and you get 10 or 12 perfect little shreds strips lengths of zucchini and you just go you know whoosh whoosh and then you have a pile of of zoodles and and you're done and if you're curious you can find uh, a julienne peeler on say amazon for like 10 bucks they're not yeah they're, not they're, they're super cheap um and they are very fast require no washing up the 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 big difference between that and a spiralizer because you've probably seen a lot of recipes which use zoodles that will they'll be spiral so if you're used to that look or that's the look you want or that makes you feel more noodly (laughs) to have them in spirals then julienne peel is not going to give you that it's going to give you it's going to give you noodles but they're going to be straight like spaghetti not curled up however when you cook them they become 
a lot more flexible. So if you need the curls, then a spiralizer's your your thing. If you're not worried about them being curly, then a Julienne peeler is super fast and and very easy. And that just reminded me why we're talking about Zoogles because oh. Sir Williamson posted in one of our Facebook groups. The Keto Evangelist about, Kitchen. The Keto Evangelist Kitchen Facebook group. I no, think it was no, it was the advanced, advanced keto. keto. It was the advanced keto group. Keto. And the question was, what is a keto food that you love to eat but you hate to make? Mm. And I think the majority answer to that question was Zoodles. That sounds like a brilliant question. Whoever asked that, it sounds like a very handsome guy. I'm just saying. So. And um, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Uh, so and, so yeah so that's why we want to talk about it but i do want so to point that, out that, this that's why we're, we're hoping to if you love zoodles and apparently a lot of you love zoodles but you hate to make them so the point of this this podcast was was that maybe i could give you some ways to make your zoodle making less horrible so you could just do more enjoying and less hating making okay so and I, need, I think a julienne peeler may be the answer to all your zoodle problems well i do want to point out a couple of things when we're talking about zoodles now when we're talking about zoodles are zucchini noodles it's important that people understand that you can't make zoodles look like um farfalli you can't make zoodles look like rigatoni you can't make them look like penne you can't make them look like fusilli so you're stuck with basically a spaghetti kind of noodles so if you're looking to make exotic pasta shapes out of your zucchini, you're, it's not going to work so well. So you're stuck with just noodles. Yes. That's why it's not called zu, zuin, zinguini. <laughs> zinguini. That doesn't work. Yeah, that. So. Oh, I take that I, back. I take that back. Um, lasagna. People have made lasagna with using zucchini as the, as the, the noodles. Yes, and so if you want to, although I find eggplants better, however, Ew. because is... zucchini is very wet, so okay. it can it can make things a bit soggy. Um, however, if you want to to do that with, if you want to make lasagna noodles, you'll just either use a mandolin. Mandolin, yeah, that's going to be your answer right there. Or a knife. A knife. Um, okay, but let's get back to a mandolin. Will give you a much. More, it will give you yeah. a completely consistent thickness. Uniform because the blade is set. It'll be very uniform. It'll be very beautiful. It will be completely consistent. Um, if you're skilled with a knife, you can do the same, but it will take you longer because the mandolin literally just you know rub 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 and you're done it's, although you do get waste it's like a deli slicer but it's a it's a stationary blade not a spinning blade uh, yes uh, okay so let's say that someone has gone through the the process of julianning uh some zucchini or they have spiralized their zucchini and they've got a bowl of abomination vegetable noodle stuff sitting there uh now what do they do so i'm going to share uh -oh. Actually, I've got two recipes for zoodles, oh. and one of them is done with leeks. Of course. Why am I not and surprised? And one of them is done with coconut cream. Oh. And Brian gets to choose which one we're going to do. Oh, good grief. Um, <clears throat> well, uh -huh. I, I know how much you love leeks, so let's do that one. You want to do the leeks one? Well, no, I, I just know how much you love leeks, so let's do that one. I do love leeks. So this is um, a recipe, and I will have it posted up onto the Keith Vangelis Kitchen blog um, before you listen to this. So if you're listening to this, you'll be able to go back to the website and poke the button and the recipe will be there for you to look at or print out or do what you will. But I'm going to just walk you through it now. Um, it's very simple. 
so that um, you can go make yourself some zoodles. So as Brian said, you've got your bowl of zoodles or your julienned uh, zucchini or your spiralized, whatever you like. And for this recipe, I used leeks as well. So I got some coconut oil. You could also use avocado oil. And you're going to put it in your largest pan because there's some tossing involved. Uh -oh. And tossing goes better in a larger pan. And you're going to <clears throat> slice the leeks very, very, very finely. And when I say sliced, I mean across, not lengthways to make long, but to make circles, so to make discs. Slice the leeks very, very finely. Once the oil, coconut or avocado, in your pan is heated, toss the leeks in, stir them around, and then saute them until they wilt, which is going to take about 10 minutes, stirring frequently so they don't stick and burn. Once the leeks are soft, you're going to turn the heat down to low and you're going to add your beautifully julienne or spiralized squash. You're going to, your, or zucchini, <clears throat> you're going to toss the squash and zucchini and the leeks together well and you're going to let the squash warm through. Then you're going to season them with salt and pepper, sea salt, ground black pepper. In this recipe, I added some oregano and also a splash of um, – Or oregano. White. It's oregano for people who are uh, Americans. So <clears throat> just just so you know. That. And um, <clears throat> stir it in well. You only really need to let the squash warm through. Squash takes almost no time because it's julienne, because it's so thin – it really, once it's heated, it's good. Uh, okay, so let's let's run down that one more time just in case. So you're taking the oil and you're doing what with it? We're going to heat the coconut or avocado oil in a large pan. Okay. We're going to saute your very finely sliced leeks. You're going to toss those into that pan. You're going to saute them over medium heat. Okay. For about 10 minutes until they're soft. So you can use the mandolin for the leeks as well if you're not comfortable with a knife, right? So if you yes. the mandolin. Now, do you do you do you slice them on a bias or do you just go straight radius? It, do you care? I, it depends what day of the week it is, what mood I'm in, okay. what I mean so many variables. All right, so you got these you're sautéing or sautéing the leeks in the oral and do yes. you, do Stirring you Stirring frequently? Right, do you wait for it to turn brown? No. Okay. Do you wait for no. them to just get translucent and that's when you start yes. going? Okay. All right. Now, yes. do, you, do you add salt? No, not okay. at that point. <clears throat> okay, go. All right, then, then what's next? So once your leeks are sautéed, you're just going to toss your zucchini, julienne zucchini or zucchini noodles in with the leeks. You're going to toss them together well and you're just going to heat it over low until the squash is warmed through. So a couple of minutes, three minutes, that's all you need to do, just warm them through. Then you're going to add salt and pepper, oregano, toss, and then you're going to pile it on a plate, pretend it's spaghetti, put your meat sauce or whatever it is you're having on it, and then you're going to eat it and be extremely happy. Okay, so I have a question. This is Unless you're Brian. Right. I think that's been established. Um, but I have a question for you on one of the, one of the ingredients. And I wanted to mm -hmm. know if you could tell me the difference between Mexican oregano or oregano for non Carrie Brown speakers and other or regular or normal or Mediterranean oregano or oregano. Can you, do you no, know the difference? Um, you no idea. Okay. I would, my, my best guess would be that the Mexican one's hotter, but I don't know. Okay. I just I know that there's a difference. I just don't know what the difference is. And we could do we could probably put that down as an episode. We could talk about different 
herbs. I know we've done an herbs episode, but we can talk about something like that. Oh, we 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 only scratched the surface of, of herbs in okay. the herb episode. We could talk about. Well, herbs okay. For- so here's this is the this is what if you're listening to this and you know the difference between Mexican or oregano. You've got me saying oregano now. Mexican oregano versus regular oregano. <clears throat> um, either let us know in the group in the Facebook group. Let us know on Twitter or let us know on Instagram. Um, Keto Evangelist Kitchen. You can find us in any of those places. Let us know if you, what the difference is. Um, okay, so that's that's the meal. That's so. So the issue with with zoodles seems to be how to make them, or the the hassle of actually getting a zucchini from the zucchini shape to the the abomination noodle, zoodle shape. Right. So we've <laughs> clarified that pretty easily. That there's a pretty simple and easy way to do that. So then the cooking part. Yes, I, I assume that the, the difficulty, the reason people hate it, is that making them into zoo, making the zucchini into zoodles is the problem. Right. Because once you've got them in zoodle form, they are three minutes of easy. You show them to a hot pan, and pretty much good. Yeah. So here's here's my thinking. Okay, you you want my thinking on this, and I could be wrong, and I'm willing to be wrong about this. But here's my thinking. The reason that people put that as the thing that they they hate to make is because then they have to eat zoodles. <laughs> no? This is No, Brian, Brian, okay. pay attention. The question was, what is the one keto thing you love but hate to make? Oh, okay. All right. Then uh I'll have to reassess my 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 take on that one. You're just trying to put a damper <laughs> On everybody else's love of vegetables. <laughs> Bizarre attraction to vegetables. <laughs> you you yeah. just, I mean, that just came out of nowhere. You just made that up. Stop I, it. I, Stop I, it. I, if nothing else, I'm consistent. Um, okay, so so the it's a pretty simple, easy solution. I mean, you've provided like, like 19 different ways that you could uh, um, make the actual noodle forms in different varieties. And then there, so the, the, and so the reason I bring that up is because the cooking of it is quick and easy, right? It's all of the, it's if, the prep. if you feel like you have to go buy an expensive thing and drag it out and use it, and then you have to clean it and it's a big hassle, there's an easier way, right? You can go. No, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like, I would, I love to have, you know, freshly painted house, but the taping, Oh, the taping! Right. No, no, no! Right. I'm I'm paying someone else to do taping. Right. I'm no, I'm no. I got no time for that nonsense. <clears throat> right. My my wife, by the way, loves to paint, and she has never once complained about having to tape up stuff. She doesn't seem to be bothered by that. So, uh, please, please ship her up. Yeah. I have a beautiful <clears throat> guest room. I I <laughs> keep her happily taping for weeks. <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? Tape. All right. So. I- I will cook for her. <laughs> right. We'll, Up to six times a day. We'll cook for tape. Yeah. Um, she, well, she will also have her choice of cats, except Mr. McHenry. Mr. McHenry's not available, but the other three, a- any of them, she hmm. can just, you know. And I have a sauna and, and I have a one of those massage chair things. So, I mean, it's all hers if she'll just come and tape for me. I'll, I'll pass it along. I'll see what she says. Um, okay. So, Zoodles by themselves. Uh, yeah, they're kind of daunting because they, they present a mess and, you know, they can be kind of a hassle, but you've given folks options so that they don't have to, they're, it's not that daunting, you know, and and the, the cleanup is not that big of a deal. So we will also, when, when we publish this, I'll, I'll publish um, a link to the recipe, but I'll also link to all of the tools we described so that you can go look at them and decide which one is the. Is the perfect tool for you. So let me ask you this. Okay, so we kind of glossed over this, and this is the part that I was waiting for. Um, was you said, and you can just you know spoon your meat sauce over it. But what's the meat sauce? Like we didn't talk about that at all. So in this particular recipe, it's turkey and mushroom stroganoff. So you don't. Ha- you can actually use real meat and not turkey, right? If you want to, like you can. <laughs> no. Is it required? Uh, for well, for, for this recipe, I could you, you, yeah, you you could change out the ground turkey for beef or pork if that would be your preference. Okay, so you can make some some 
uh, it could be a meat sauce, meat and mushroom sauce, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, is there anything exotic in the in the sauce that would need people would need to worry about or think about? Mm, no, the only thing that might be new to some people who haven't been around me or Keith Vandalish Kitchen very long would be the konjac flour, which is also known as glucomannan powder, which is hands down the best um, thickener keto, keto thickener yeah. there is. So I use that. I highly recommend when you next order from Amazon um, that you get yourself a tub. It will last you forever because you don't use very much. I highly recommend that you just order some because if you um, are going to be using any of our recipes, you will be using it because that's that's the, the thickener that I use for all hot applications. Okay, so it it'll thicken well in a hot meal as opposed to a um, yes needing to be like lukewarm or room temperature. Uh, right. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. So <clears throat> that should um, that should clarify some things for some people, right? Um, I hope so. I hope that that will make it easier for you oh. to hate making zoodles less. So let me ask you this then: Is there anything that would not go well with zoodles like can you think of something that you could like say let's say a a seafood alfredo sauce would that go okay with zoodles as well you think it would and i you know zucchini is and i almost hate to say this because brian's gonna go ha told you so but zucchinis are not like very exciting vegetables told you so I have to agree. So they're kind of like spaghetti. They're kind of tasteless, and they're just good transporters for the exciting bits. Right, or you could just use a spoon to get the exciting bits and just leave the zoodles in the bowl is another option. No, no, no. No. I'm getting a sense that, that that might defeat the entire purpose of what we're talking about. Exactly. The mm-hmm. idea is to is to give you that the same kind of sense and comfort that that spaghetti used to give you. <laughs> uh, okay, I got you. All right. Well, um... so, so zucchinis are. I, I mean, zucchinis on their own are kind of blah. I hate to say that. Bah, with you on the other end. <laughs> of the bah. However, uh... the upside of that is that you can use them with pretty much anything and they're going to just absorb the flavors of the everything. Right. Um, so they are a decent transporter then, is what you're saying. They're a great transporter and they don't fight with whatever you ladle on them or eat with them. They don't fight. They're just kind of sitting there looking like noodles and and transporting food well and getting some vegetables in you, fiber, yum. Um, but they don't battle with whatever sauce it is you're adding to them. Okay. <clears throat> well, there you go. All right. So, you know what time it is now, then? Yes. It is Motivation Monday time. Yay! So, our Motivation Monday for today is. Wait. Wait. What? You mean. Making zoodles hasn't motivated you enough. <laughs> I was, I was like, like literally, like leaning into the screen when you said, "Wait!" I'm like, oh, "What?" <laughs> and the answer to that question is no, no, it is not. So thank oh, you very so much. Oh, I failed. No, 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 no. Yes. Uh, so z- zoodles are fantastic for people who. Like that sort of thing. Not that there's anything wrong so with that. Motivation Monday is for the people, the few people, the handful of people on earth who are not completely motivated to yes. make Zoogles now. The vast minority of people who who are um, just the complete outliers. Like they they don't fit the mold of of regular human beings. They need to be motivated because Zoodles just doesn't motivate them. Okay, well, if they're not motivated by zoodles, I you better have something really good. You might as well check them for a pulse, right? That's that's 
That's all it is to it. All right, so these so, people are going to take some serious <laughs> motivating if Zoodles doesn't do it. Well, we'll see what we can do. Um, so in in conjunction with what we were talking about earlier, the, our Motivation Monday quote for the day is, if your ship doesn't come in, you need to swim out to meet it. All right. So if your ship doesn't come in, you need to swim out to meet it. Now, we were talking before about swimming. This, of course, is metaphorical. Right. So the idea here is... That you Thank can goodness for that. <laughs> right. So the idea here is you don't have to if you're sitting around waiting for something to happen, waiting for something to to um to occur in your life that's going to move you to that next level or move you to that next step, you're probably going to be disappointed. It's gonna take some action on your part. If your if your ships doesn't come in, you gotta you gotta take some initiative and you got to go out to meet it. So if you want something to happen, that means you got to put some effort and some work into it. So that applies to the business world, to the professional life, to family, to relationships, the whole bit. If you want a kind of life built a certain way, it takes some effort on your part to, to sort of meet that life halfway. You've got to put some work into it. So you got to, you got to be willing to, to exert a little bit to get where you need to go. So if your ship doesn't come in, you got to swim out to meet it. All right. So what do you think about that? Well, of course, I can't possibly have a thought that doesn't involve food. Right. So uh, um, this just hugely applies to your your keto journey. Right. You're not going to get the results. I mean, you know, by sitting and waiting for something to happen magically, it, it's not it's not magic. You actually have to get up and do things you, you that have to make changes me. you have to make you have to initiate the changes in your life right you do um you're probably gonna have to get up and and go cook something <laughs> right because right. most of the the pre-prepared food is simply not keto it's not going to help you get to where you want to be so this would be your act of swimming out to meet the ship the ship is the ship is you know the body that the body that you want the health that you want you're going to have to swim out to meet it because you're going to have to do some stuff in the kitchen. You're going to have to do some cooking. You're going to have to change the way you eat it actually. And, and you may also have to, you know, start being more active. Those are things that you are going to have to do. It's not just going to magically happen. Right. You, it's, it's your life. If you want it to look a certain way, you got to take some, initiative and make it happen so you gotta you... And, and the people that you see all the 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 success stories that that we share on the the keto success facebook group they they swam out to meet the ship right all of them right. they they get those results and we look at them and go wow you know how did we do that they did that by swimming out to meet the ship right Precisely. Okay. So hopefully if Zoodles didn't do it for you, this is this is a motivation fact or, or idea that you can cling to this week to what can you do this week? What's one thing that you can do that's going to drive you closer to whatever goal you're working toward? Instead of waiting for it to happen to you, what kind of initiative can you take? What kind of action can you take to move yourself forward? So that's what you should think about this week. All right. So that's our Motivation Monday. Okay, so, dude, we talked about swimming pools, we talked about zoodles, we talked about ships and killer whales, uh, and, you know... Seagulls! We didn't do seagulls! We did not, and there's a reason for that. Seagulls are awesome! Seagulls are essentially winged rats. As well. I wanted people, lovely people, lovely listeners, I wanted to have the door open because the, the, the where I'm staying, the, the door goes onto the balcony, I'm on the fourth floor, and, and it overlooks the ocean, and there were seagulls, and they were making this awesome seagully noise, and I wanted to do the podcast with the door open, and Brian wouldn't let me. And I would like to say you're welcome to all the listeners for holding a hard line about that, because, she, mm -hmm. uh, because seagulls are not uh, podcast friendly. So I just, seagulls let you know you're by the sea, and that's awesome. Do you know what else would let you know that you're by the sea? <laughs> <clears throat> Having your leg bitten off by a shark, also an octopus suffocating you, um, also drowning. Those are all things that would let you know you're close to the sea. 
So no, if any of those things are happening, you're in the sea. You're not <laughs> by it. You're in it. Uh, all right. So and I highly recommend you don't do that. Right. Stay away from the octopi. The, that's yes. that's the rule number one. All right, Carrie. Thank you. This has been a great episode as always. And uh, I guess we're gonna. I guess I'll talk to you next week. You know, enjoy your your um, your excursion to the ocean. I will. Very much. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. See ya. All right. That's another trip to the kitchen. Now you know how to make zoodles, and hopefully you understand that it doesn't have to be messy and a bunch of hassle. So you got an easy way to do it. So give it a shot if you're into that sort of thing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, if you want to connect with us on the social medias, facebook.com slash groups slash Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Also, the Keto Van Kitchen on Twitter, Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Instagram. We're all over the place. You can find us, you can talk to us, ask us questions, whatever. Uh, because you're awesome. Because Carrie's awesome. Oh, also, I forgot to mention iTunes reviews. Tell the world how awesome Carrie is. Because she's awesome. All right, folks, until next time, you keep being awesome. Powered by Ketones.